Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I'm the N in Nmon, as it's Nigel's monitor. I'm the developer and I maintain it. In the previous video, we looked at downloading, installing, and then running it online, looking at what the computer was doing right now live. In this one, we'll be using it in data capture mode for later graphing and analysis. By default, if you just type in the Nmon command, it puts it live onto the screen. If you use the minus little f option, it captures the same performance data and a whole bunch of configuration information into a file. Now the N1 output file is a simple text file, so you can edit it with the VI editor, for example, and see all the data. A lot of people are very scared of, uh, they think it's in some sort of funny binary format or something and never have actually have a look inside it. It's very simple. It is also a comma separated values files or CSV file and that means your standard uh, spreadsheets can understand that format and they can put all the, the heading lines, the, the text that describes the statistics and the actual numbers into the cells of a spreadsheet and then you can manually graph it. I'll briefly show you how to do that in a minute. This is called post-mortem graphing and analysis because we'll wait for N1 to collect all the data then we have the entire file and we'll run the analysis on it. So to do this N1 minus F we've already covered that minus S and the seconds between data captures. So N1 will capture some data, wait this number of seconds and capture another set of data. And then the minus C option is a count of how many captures you want. So that allows you to determine how often you collect the data and how long you expect this. So what would I recommend for that number of seconds and the count? Well, a detailed graph that looks good on a screen. Uh, you need 300 to 600 data captures. I get some N1 users that create thousands and thousands of data points, um, and then they try and put this onto a screen that only has, you know, 1,000 pixels across. Trying to map 18,000 points onto 1,000 pixels doesn't work, of course. You can't have eight data points per pixel on your screen. So keeping it down to this sort of number produces a nice detailed graph without any extra wasted uh, data and file space and processing time of the files. The output is in the current directory named like this, the host name, the date, and the time. And I very carefully selected this. So if you have a directory full of N1 files, then when you list them out, they come out in host name order, so you can find them easily. And then they have the, the date and time in this particular format, uh, so that it actually comes out in date order. I have people writing scripts that uh, decide the output file name of uh, the M1 files and they make horrendous mistakes like putting the month in alphabetical. Uh, then you'll find, um, is it April or August is the first month uh, when you list them out. They come in a completely random order as I, far as I can see. Whereas if you have them in numeric year, month, day order, then when you list the directory out, they all come out in the right order. When you run Nmon, it will actually disconnect from your terminal session. Now, many people think this is crashed and you get back to your uh, prompt. But in actual fact, it's running in the background. It's disconnected itself. It's running like a daemon process. So if you log off or your network uh, has a problem and you get logged off anyway, it will carry on running and collect the data you requested. You can go and see it with a PS command and you'll see N1 running. So let me give you two examples. Perhaps you have a classical Dolly Parton curve during the day, busy 11 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So you want to capture one of those busy hours to see what's going on. We want to capture for an hour, 60 minutes and 60 seconds, there's number, this number of seconds, and let's go for a 5 second interval and we end up with 720 snapshots. Now that's slightly over the 600, but we, we can deal with that, that will go in fine. And so we say the time between the snapshots is 5 seconds, 720, we wait for the hour for it to complete that capture, and then we have our data to then graph. The second one would be capturing all day. A lot of people just capture it as a matter of course all day long. 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds. This is the number of, of seconds in a day. And then if we say let's capture it to two minute intervals, again we come up with 720. That will graph nicely so that's a good mix of enough detail and enough data in the file. You may want to automatically do this, of course, so perhaps you put into your cron 0, 0, I've got my uh, little aid memoir down here, so this is uh, 0 minutes and 0 hours, so that's at midnight, and uh, the star, star, star is every day of the month, every month, every weekday, then you'll run the N1 file, this is a typical place where people put their N1 binaries, use a local bin, 
um, then we're going to say minus F, minus T, we'll come to that in a second, then we have the two minute interval, so that's 120 seconds and 720 captures, and I'm using the minus M option, we'll come to this as well, this is where the output file will actually go, this is my uh, home directory and a directory for M1 data itself. Now when you use that minus air flag it switches it into data collection mode and it presets up the basic set of data that we want to collect. It wants the CPU data, the memory, disk, network, kernel and file systems. It also collects quite a lot of configuration information. Now over here these are what will actually appear in the file on the front of a line. The AAA is the details about N1 and what parameters you ask for. The BBB sections are the regular configuration data. We just run a lot of commands and collect all that data and save it into the file. It's quite important that perhaps you want to look at some N1 data, but then you want to find out, well, which operating system version is it, or how big are these disks and things. That will be in the BBB sections. For CPU, the front of the line starts with CPU, memory, there's two sets of it for the memory and the virtual memory handling, um, there's disk for disk, there's quite a lot of disk information in here for the read and the write and the number of transactions and the block sizes and things, so there's they always start with disk and then something else in here to give it which one of the sets of data it is. Uh, networks is a net or the, the net packets, so the sizes what we collect, uh, kernel is known as uh, process information, so it's called PROC, and file systems is the the JFS uh, file details. So you want to make this minus F option the first flag on the line. It will set all these up and then you can add some extra flags to switch on some extra things on the top. And so here's my list of all the other flags you can have. We've already seen minus M in a directory that gets Nmon to move to a specific directory before it actually saves the file for you. Minus T, you may have guessed in here, switches on the top processes. That can add significant amount of extra data into the file if you've got you know, tens of thousands of processes uh, running. Minus T is the same as top processes, but it actually saves the command line arguments. That can be useful if, for example, a database, all the um, processes that run on behalf of the database are actually the same command, the same binary. That's good for minimizing the amount of memory you take up, um, but maybe the options, the command line arguments tell you this is the log writer and this is the you know, query daemons and all those sorts of things. Minus capital U is uh, new to our Linux version of N1. Um, Linux now has 10 utilization stats, so we save all of those. Uh, again, over here you can see what to look for at the start of the line in the file. Minus D, that now includes the disk service times and wait times. Uh, NFS, as you can imagine, the minus N, capital N, rather than the little N, um, for the NFS stats. Of course, don't switch these things on if you're not actually using NFS, otherwise you'll just get a whole load of blank data. We also have this thing called user-defined disk groups. So people tend to have lots and lots of disks on some systems, maybe silly numbers of disks these days when we should be getting the hardware back-end disk subsystems to do a lot of the work for us. Um, but we can redefine our disk so we could say that you know the disks uh, A, B, and C are our database disks, and uh, DEF are our index disks, and EFG are for our uh, logging for a database, for example. We can actually group those together, and then anyone will add up the stats for all those underlying files and tell you how much you're doing for your data, your index, and your log. There's also a new one in here where you can just put auto in here and it will generate the user-defined disk group file for you um, by looking at the output of the ls block command that gives us details of your disks. If you're compiled in and you're using an NVIDIA uh, GPU accelerator, then the minus A option will pull those data in as well or add it to the common set of data that you get with N1 anyway. Right, back to my Unix machine, here's M1 running um, on the screen, do Q to quit out of that, it looks exactly the same, and uh, on a power or Intel machine or a mainframe, whatever. Um, let's uh, collect that data for an hour now, minus F, minus seconds, 5 seconds, and minus count of the snapshots, 720. Let's add a few things, let's do uh, the T for the top processes and the uh, user arguments, and we'll do a U. Let's do um, switch on the user defining disk groups and automatically do it. 
and then we can actually put on the uh, disk service times as well so we'll just let that run okay so it generated the uh, little auto file uh, for us and it's off and running if we ps minus f grip m1 we should still find there it is running in the background and if we list our files if we list our files then we should say this is the one that uh, we're actually collecting into this this file will creep up in size every uh, five seconds and i've waffled long enough so we should be able to run that again and yep the files are getting a little bit bigger now i've got a previous one in here one i did earlier that uh, we're actually going to have a look at that file it's finished so um, we can well, that's just a, a view so we can't modify it accidentally and in here we have this is the AA section I was talking about. So this is the Enmon details uh, itself. So here's the actual command. Here's the version. Uh, it's got 15 disks, host name, all sorts of things in here. Oh, this is when it was started, 1540, on the 29th of February. So leap year. Okay. Um, then further down in here, yep, find down here we have the BBB section, and um, this column here. Uh, tells us what command we are running and this is the output we got from here um, so we can see that uh, it's a CZ Enterprise uh, 12 in here and uh, other files as well saying the same thing this is the F disk minus L uh, command uh, which tells us about the disks uh, pretty low level format um, carry on that oh the LSBLK command the uh, high level view of the disks and the, the partitions um, LSCPU, again we've got lots of information here, goes on and on and on and on about all the things, N1 actually gets a lot of the data from here, so if something goes wrong it's good to have it here, we can actually see what does the file look like, oh, this is a, a power only feature, LS, sorry the LPAR stat minus I, you can see some things about the actual machine in here, and LS dev info and procs and multipass and all sorts of interesting config information, all collected in one place for you to go now, I have to go to the next important thing. I'm looking for four Zs. Okay, so here's the end of the BBB section, um, and then we're doing the first collection. This is a time snapshot one. Uh, this is the time that actually uh, we fired the the collection, and uh, and the date as well. And here's the data. But this is like CP1, CP2, CP3. And if we page down here a bit we see the other things here's the uh, memory the virtual memory the processes uh, the network stats file system oh, it was a great big block for the uh, disks in here busy read write transfers and block sizes here's the uh, top processes what is it it's a process called watchdog is uh, running and then we got another z section in here which is another data collection now this is in like time order in here. If you want to graph that, we'd actually want all the CP1 data together and all the CP2 data together, not uh, one line every 40 or 50 lines in the file. So let's come out of that and we'll do a sort minus n, because it does numeric sort is what we want. So they come out in the order we expect. Um, and what was that file? Here it is. And we'll output that into xxx dot comma separated values. Edmon files are common set of values, just making it clear that it's, uh, we've actually done a sort operation here. So if we view that file, A's and B's at the top, if we go and find that CPU001, then we have this, uh, this is all the data together now. So we have the, the user, this is the, the column headers, if you like, user system weight idle and steal. And then time one, you can see the user time was. 74%, then at time 2 it was 57%, the system time was 0.3, the weight was 0, that's good, and the idle time makes up the difference, the 25 and 40s and things. Oh, there's this time in here, we we're doing absolutely nothing, so it was all idle time. We will pull this comma separated value file into a spreadsheet in the next movie, and then we'll see how we can automate it and generate the graphs all in one go with the analyzer, and have a look at some of the other tools as well. Well, that's it for this movie on Enmon for Linux and collecting the data in a sensible way. In the next video, I'll be looking at the Enmon Analyzer. There's already a movie on the Enmon uh, charting tool to graph your Enmon data. Maybe we'll do a little contrast between the Analyzer and Enmon chart. If you've liked this video, why not click on the Liked button below. Thank you.